Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. Greetings uh, from the middle of summer, allegedly. It's July the 10th. Um, and uh, uh, we've probably just about had the biggest flood I've ever seen uh, in our village. But uh, hey, uh, I should be drinking rosé at this time of year. I should be drinking rosé or good rosé at any time of the year, but especially in summer. Just that we don't seem to have had much of a summer. So uh, hopefully by the time this ends up getting posted, uh, the sun will have returned. If it hasn't, you've just got my sunny beaming face. Um, and six rosés. Um, and I've organised them in alcohol order. It may be the wrong order. It may not be the wrong the wrong order. Only one way to find out. Taste. First one: Yali Cabernet Sauvignon Rosé, 2011, uh, from the Colchagua Valley in Chile. I have to be honest and say I stick my nose in there. And don't get much apart from the waft of sulphur dioxide, uh, the winemaker's preservative. Maybe there's a little bit of red currant fruit under there somewhere, but um, as I say, not much. Let's see whether there's more when we taste it. Gentle, pleasant, um, it's, yeah, as I say, this red currant, bit of raspberry, um, it's, it's okay. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I would love to have the weather to uh, sit this and have, the, have this with some, uh, I think, to maybe some grilled sardines or something, because it's got a quite nice, quite nice citrus twang to it. Actually, it's growing on me. Um, so I've got that, yes, I've got, I've got that, uh, that red currant, black currant, uh, but there's a bit of black bread apple pie thrown in there for good measure. Um, one of those that um, I actually might creep up and surprise me and pass what I call the empty bottle test, as in I put these six bottles on the table, the sign of which is the best is the first one to be emptied, uh, as long as there's not just me, of course. Um, but um, yeah, actually I'm liking it more with the longer it stays in my mouth. So. Um, hmm. Next one. Um, we are in Italy now, uh, and uh, this is Guerrer, Guerrieri Rizzardi's 2011 Chiaretto from, uh, well, the Bardolino Chiaretto. Or Bar uh, Chiaretto Classico. So these are these are Valpolicella grapes, uh, the, those ones, Cor uh, Corvino, Rondinella, Molinara, and uh, let's see what they're like in, um, actually, some, some reds don't have as much colour as that. Uh, there's one later on that's uh, pretty deep in colour, but uh, anyway, let's try this. There's a soft, warm summer pudding feel about that. Um, feels like um, maybe the fruit's losing a little bit of its freshness, but rosé is not a wine that uh, uh, you really want to have lingering about uh, around for too long. Uh, so it feels like there's going to be this, yeah, rounded, gentle berry, um, and it feels like it's going to be okay. It's okay. Bit of spice, bit of tannin there, bit of chewiness there. Um, maybe the, if the first one's something that you want to sit by itself, this one feels like it needs some. Uh, definitely needs a little bit of food to bite, food to bite on. Some some uh, um, yeah prosciutto or something like that. Um, so um, yeah, fruits fruits sort of there, but it's more on yeah, it's more on this quite uh, nice spicy character that's coming through. And uh, as I say, I've done them in alcohol order. It's not particularly high, twelve and a half percent. But I'm left with this warm, almost ginger-like bite on the finish. Um, interesting, and uh, certainly would have a second glass of that. Let's see how we get on with the next one. Harvey Nichols a rosé uh, from Corbière, and it's got a lovely picture of a rabbit on the label. So we are predisposed to like it, um, but uh, which is it from? Uh, Chateau Olio Romanis, uh, one of the uh, one of my favourite estates down in that part of the world. You know, back to the uh, nose of the first one, as in not much is jumping out of the glass. Um, maybe there's a little bit of spice there, a little bit of red fruit, but um, not very much of it. More what I call a texture wine than a uh, flavour wine. What do I mean by that? Well, there's some wines when you taste them and it feels like you've got a mouthful of fruit. This is one of those where when you've swallowed it or spat it out, as of course I do because I'm working, um, it feels like there's quite a lot left in your mouth. Um, and um, so that it feels like it's, got, it's quite fleshy. Uh, the fruit's not um, uh, overripe, so it's not like a big jammy uh, character or anything, but there's spice there. Uh, there is this, um, yeah, again, what I call, uh, past what I call the empty bottle test. It's not, uh, it's not jumping out to say hello, uh, but at the same time, it has a lot of understated, attractive features. I suppose a bit like me. Uh, <clears throat> next one. Um, we are on, ah, uh, no, it's, it's, it's a, a mock-up label, because I'm not sure whether the, the, this was, uh, had been bottled, uh, sorry, had been uh, labelled by the time they, they sent it to me. So, uh, uh, this is from the Lyrarchis Winery in, uh, in Crete. And it's their Octo Rosé, which is a blend of Syrah 
and uh, so you know Sarah, and a local group called Cotsi Farley. And uh, I was saying about the Guerrero Rosati, uh, about it being a colour that um, uh, would make a few red wines look a bit embarrassed. This is pretty close to red wine colour. There's quite a few um, red burgundies that uh, um, are uh, similarly pale and interesting. Get a more rounded sweetness here, and I don't know whether there's... Uh, it's almost as if someone's put um, uh, something slightly exotic, like a bit of muscat or a bit of um, uh, Gewürztraminer in there. Uh, so there's that character. There's a quite a slightly cooked berry, a bit confected. Um, it, you, you Here, you feel a little bit of the heat of, of the place coming through. So there's this warm uh, touch of the spice as well. Uh, but it um, feels like it's maybe not going to be as subtle as some of the ones before, but maybe make up for it in guts and depth of flavour. Yeah, that's rosé for red wine fans. Um, it's got a sweet fruit, it's got these berries, it's got a little bit of uh, red cherry. Touch on the medicinal side, that's maybe the uh, bit of it I'm not so sure about. Um, but you're left uh, with this, um, yeah, you, you, you know you've tasted something that started off as a red wine, or started off with red grapes, as um, some, some, some rosés you think, uh, if I shut my eyes I'd have sworn that was a white wine. Here, it's good, but um, uh, I think... Uh, yeah, I, it's, it's weird. I'm not usually a big rosé fan, uh, but uh, I, I say that's good and uh, I preferred the previous three. Uh, a well-known name next for wine number five, it's Torres Vina Sol uh, Rosé 2011 from Catalonia. Um, I mean, Vina Sol started life as a, just a white wine, but now I think they've got, um, I think there's a red and obviously there's a rosé because I'm tasting it. Another of those where it's not exactly jumping out and saying hello. A um, bit like the, uh, which one was it, the Harvey Nicks Corbier. Um, I get that, uh, it feels like there's warmth and there's spice and there's that, that bit of red fruit uh, um, ripeness in there, but um, not a huge amount of them. And then when you come to taste it, um, this summer pudding richness kicks in. So you're left with this warm, uh, slightly, uh, do you remember strawberry maybe lollies? Uh, yes, yeah, strawberry, slightly cooked strawberry, vanilla, um, and uh, maybe a touch simple, maybe a touch on the sweet side, I'm not sure. It could just be the ripeness of the fruit, but um, a bit of a crowd pleaser. But um, if you please crowds, there are. Um, that's a really pretty good measure of success, isn't it? So, um, not my favourite, but uh, that would go down extremely well. Um, final one is Ridgeback Shiraz Rosé from South Africa and from Paul, Paul in particular. So uh, let's give this a whirl. Well, it's the highest in alcohol, but it's uh, it's one of the palest in colour. Um, and uh, I think that they've done that by doing a really, really short uh, skin contact on, on the Shiraz grapes. Otherwise, they would have got more colour, more flavour. Uh, funny, I stick my nose in. I get a, do, do get a little bit of uh, red fruit there. But I also get uh, characters that I associate far more with uh, white wines, like uh, kiwi fruit. Um, and, um, yeah, kiwi fruit, a bit of citrus, a bit of apple. I almost wish that they'd done a little bit more skin contact on them. Um, I think that uh, it's turned out, you know, I was talking about those wines that you shut your eyes and it could be white. That is veering towards that. Uh, I think a little bit more time with those skins would have got a, more of that red berry flavour. It's not that I don't like the flavours that are there, but they're more flavours I associate with a white wine. Um, so, um, but all in all, I mean, there's none of these that I would uh, I would find the nearest plant pot for. Uh, some of them I would uh, I would I would not not be hogging at my end of the table because that's not the type of guy I am. But uh, I would certainly be making sure I had at least a second glass. And uh, if it's summer continues like this, summer. Ha! Uh, if it continues like this, then maybe I'd insist on a third glass and a sunray lamp inside. See you soon.